Hi my friends. Welcome back to You Can Do TV channel. Did you know, on Earth there is a machine that can generate a temperature 10 times greater than the core temperature of the sun, 150 million degrees. In this video we will learn together what is that machine and how is it made? A global collaboration was formed consisting of the U.S., the European, Union, Japan, Russia, China, India, and South Korea. Member nations are building a prototype fusion power plant known as a ITER. The main content of the video will cover the manufacturing of ITER vacuum vessel, and the ITER toroidal field coils as well as the entire ITER construction process. The International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, ITER, is a prototype fusion power plant being built in France by a global coalition of countries. Its objective is to serve as a test bed for future fusion power producing reactors and to refine the technology for achieving sustainable fusion energy. With further research and development, fusion energy has the potential to provide a clean and virtually limitless source of energy for the world. Fusion energy production is a promising alternative to traditional energy sources, as it relies on the fusion of atomic nuclei to release energy instead of relying on non-renewable fuels. Deuterium particle injection is one method being researched for achieving fusion energy production. The process involves heating a mixture of deuterium and tritium to temperatures exceeding 150 million degrees Celsius, creating a plasma. The plasma is then further heated by injecting extremely high-velocity neutral deuterium atoms. These charged particles are trapped by the magnetic field and collide with lower-energy plasma particles, transferring energy and heating the plasma further. Once the plasma reaches a sufficient density and temperature, fusion reactions occur between the deuterium and tritium. This process releases energy in the form of high-energy neutrons, which can be harnessed to generate electricity. The construction of the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, ITER, was an ambitious undertaking that began in 2010. The first phase of construction involved preparing the site for the tokamak building, which is the central component of the ITER facility. This involved the excavation and leveling of the land, the construction of access roads and infrastructure, and the installation of temporary buildings for the workforce. The site covered an area of 42 hectares and was located in Kaderich, France. The next phase involved the excavation of a massive foundation pit, which was 17 meters deep and covered an area of 4,000 square meters. This pit was used to construct the Tokamak building. The construction of the Tokamak building involved the pouring of over 17,000 cubic meters of concrete, the installation of over 5,000 tons of steel reinforcement, and the construction of multiple floors and levels to accommodate the various components of the Tokamak. The ITER assembly animation provides an overview of the assembly process of the ITER fusion reactor. As the European partner in the project, F4E is responsible for supplying half of the components required for the construction of the device. The animation is based on ITER CAD data and shows the step-by-step -step process of installing the components in the tokamak pit, which is the designated location for the device. The animation demonstrates the assembly process from the bottom up, starting with the installation of the base and lower cylinder of the cryostat, which have already been put in place. The next phase of the assembly process involves the installation of the tokamak components, which includes the massive magnets that are used to create the magnetic field necessary to confine the plasma. This is followed by the installation of various other components such as heating and cooling systems, diagnostic equipment, and control systems.
The vacuum vessel is a key component of the ITER fusion reactor. The vessel provides a high vacuum environment where fusion reactions take place. The manufacturing of the ITER vacuum vessel is a complex and challenging process that involves forging, hot forming, machining, and welding. The vacuum vessel for the ITER tokamak is made up of nine sectors. The procurement of the vacuum vessel is shared by Europe, which is responsible for providing five sectors, and Korea, which is responsible for providing four sectors. The manufacturing process for each sector is carried out in multiple stages, with strict quality control measures to ensure that the final product meets the required standards. The first stage in the manufacturing process is forging. Forging involves shaping a metal by applying heat and pressure. In the case of the vacuum vessel, the material used is stainless steel, which is known for its strength, durability, and resistance to corrosion. The stainless steel blocks used for forging are first cut into the desired size and shape. They are then heated to a high temperature of around 1200 degrees Celsius in a furnace. Once the blocks reach the required temperature, they are placed on a press and shaped into the desired form using a die. Forging produces a rough shape of the sector, which is then subjected to further processing. The next stage in the manufacturing process is hot forming. Hot forming involves heating the forged metal to a high temperature and shaping it further using a press. In the case of the vacuum vessel, the hot forming process involves using a special press that is capable of applying up to 5,000 tons of force. The press applies force to the heated metal, which is shaped using dies. The hot forming process produces a more precise shape than forging and removes any deformations that may have occurred during the forging process. After hot forming, the sector is subjected to machining. Machining involves cutting, drilling, and shaping the metal to the required specifications. In the case of the vacuum vessel, machining involves using specialized machines such as CNC, computer numerical control, machines that are capable of precision cutting and shaping. Machining produces a highly precise shape that meets the required tolerances and specifications. Finally, the sector is subjected to welding. Welding involves joining metal parts together using a high temperature process that fuses the metal. In the case of the vacuum vessel, the sector is welded to form a complete section of the vessel. The welding process for the vacuum vessel is a complex one, as it involves welding together parts that are up to 13 meters in diameter and 6 meters in height. The welding process involves using specialized machines such as automated orbital welding machines that ensure a precise and consistent weld.
The first step is the inner shell forming, which involves shaping the inner shell using specialized equipment. Next, FSH, fusion safety and operations hole. Hole machining is done to create a hole in the inner shell, which will provide access for the remote handling equipment. After this, E-beam welding is done on the FSH to create a strong and secure joint. IWS, in wall shielding, rib welding is then done to attach the shielding blocks to the inner shell. Outer shell welding is done next, which involves welding the outer shell to the inner shell and the IWS blocks. Inner modular key welding is then done to attach the keys to the outer shell, which will be used to assemble the different sectors of the vacuum vessel. A pot, phased array ultrasonic testing, test is done to check for any defects or inconsistencies in the welding. Next, RVE, resonance vibration excitation, testing is done on the outer shell to check its structural integrity. Final machining is then done to ensure that the outer shell is of the correct dimensions and shape. The equatorial segment is then attached to the inboard segment using specialized equipment, and FSH modeling and machining is done to create access holes in the equatorial segment. IWS block installation is done next, followed by 3D measuring to check for any dimensional errors. TRS, test requisition sheet, installation is done to ensure that the vacuum vessel meets all the required specifications. Finally, the inboard segment is assembled with the other sectors of the vacuum vessel to complete the fabrication process. Each sector is made up of three segments, the inboard, equatorial, and outboard segments. The assembly is done using specialized equipment and is a crucial step in the fabrication of the eater vacuum vessel.
the eater burning plasma is expected to reach 150 million degrees Celsius. How are we going to confine it? 18 powerful superconducting magnets, known as toroidal field coils, will be powered with 68000A to generate a magnetic field of 11.8 Tesla, approximately 1 million times stronger than magnetic fields of the Earth. In this cage we will entrap the energy of a small sun. Europe's manufacturing of the eater toroidal field coils is a complex process that involves many steps and a high level of precision. These 10 massive magnets, each measuring 17 by 9 meters and weighing 320 tons, will create a magnetic field of up to 11.8 Tesla to confine the hot plasma of the eater, the biggest fusion device. More than 600 people from 26 companies have collaborated with Fusion for Energy, F4E, to produce the 10 TF coils. The final manufacturing steps are performed at the Simic factory in Marghera, Venice, Italy. The process begins by bending 750 meters of conductor into a double spiral trajectory to form a double pancake. The conductor is made up of roughly 1,400 superconducting niobium tin and copper strands fitted inside a stainless steel conduit of about 45 millimeters in diameter. The length of the conductor during winding needs to be controlled with an accuracy of 0.05 millimeters per meter. The double pancake must be heat treated at 650 degrees Celsius in an inert atmosphere to make it superconductive. The collateral of the double pancake must be fitted inside the radio play a cell acid structure with grooves on both sides to feed the conductor inside the grooves of the radio play. This task is performed by the insertion tool. The double pancake conductor is then wrapped and electrically insulated using several layers of glass fiber and captain tape. The double pancake must then be locked inside the razor blade groove by the cover plates, which are subsequently laser welded by three robots working simultaneously. The total length to be welded is around 1.5 kilometers. The double pancake is then wrapped with an insulating material and transferred to a mold to be impregnated with resin. This is cured at high temperature, removed from the mold, and goes through a series of final checks. The manufacture of a double pancake is then complete. The seven double pancakes are then electrically jointed, wrapped with glutes kept on tape, and finally electrically insulated to form the winding pack. The winding pack is then wrapped in between stainless steel sheets, compacted, and welded together to create a closed volume. The closed volume is then vacuumed to eliminate all the remaining humidity and gas trapped inside the insulation. The resin is slowly injected, and the temperature is increased up to 155 degrees for several days to harden the resin and solidify the electrical insulation. After the cool-down cycle, the casing is peeled off, and an impregnated wine bag is obtained. The magnet is assembled in a large and heavy transportation state frame to be shipped to another facility. It will travel from the port of La Spezia to the port of Marghera, which is located on the opposite side of Italy. In this facility, the one depart will be contested and finally inserted into a stainless steel coil structure.
the arrival of the first components on the ITER site in summer 2014 will be the starter pistol for rolling out the assembly master plan. A very detailed script that will help to orchestrate one of the most complex stage shows ever performed. The ITER assembly commences with the installation of the cryostat base, followed by the nine 40 degree sectors of the vacuum vessel, the surrounding thermal shields, the superconducting magnets, and finally the cryostat. Then, having checked the correct alignment of all these parts, the installation of ITER's in vessel components can begin. Among the first components to be installed inside the naked vacuum vessel are the diagnostic looms supplying the many different diagnostic sensors that help to observe and control the plasma performance. These systems, directly attached to the inner wall of the vacuum vessel, comprise some 800 individual installations. The looms will be introduced through the machine's equatorial ports using a set of custom-made tools, platforms and cranes. Next in line are the vertical stability coils that will provide fast vertical stabilization of the plasma. Each of these coils will be delivered in 120 degree sections with an approximate weight of 1.5 tons each. Each coil section is transferred from the assembly hall to the port cell using special purpose trolleys capable of manipulating the coil and allowing it to pass through the port cell area. Once inside the vessel, the coil sections will be rotated by 180 degrees and brought into position. A rotation mechanism will be supported from a winch on the installed support crane, connecting to the coil's strong back. It is then maneuvered into a temporary assembly position and located onto a waiting fixtures that allow for the joining of the coil sections. This process requires precise alignment of 0.1 mm, followed by a bracing, testing and welding campaign carried out manually that will last approximately five months. Once the pieces have been joined and tested for their leak tightness, they will be raised or lowered into their final position for connecting to their feeders. The next components to be installed are the ELM coils and their feeders. They will help control plasma instabilities called edge localized modes, hence ELMs. There are three such coils foreseen for each of the nine vessel sectors, the individual weight of each coil being 1400 kilograms. The ELM coils will be delivered to the vacuum vessel using the through port transfer system. This 20 meter long delivery line is the workhorse amongst all the assembly tools, the jack of all trades. Once introduced into the vessel, the ELM coils are presented in their final orientation to be collected and positioned by the in-vessel tower crane. Each coil and feeder has its own dedicated lifting frame, ensuring that the components can be safely lifted and manipulated. Tooling installed by hand in the final position awaits the offloading of the coils into a standoff position, approximately 400 millimeters from their final position. The tooling design allows the final positioning to be carried out by hand to allow accurate final location with close visual inspection by personnel on a mobile work platform. The feeders are installed following the same procedure. Next in line are the blanket manifolds, the inlet and outlet pipe bundles that will supply the cooling water for the blanket modules. Because of their physical size measuring up to 7.5 by 3 meters and a weight of 400 up to 600 kilograms, the technique used to introduce them to the inside of the vacuum vessel employs a guide roller on the edge of the equatorial port to allow the lower end of the manifold, mounted on its lifting frame, to be guided to the lower part of the vessel where tooling will locate and stabilize the manifold before it is rotated into a vertical position.
Once in the vertical position, the in-vessel tower crane will lift and transport the manifold to its standoff position on pre-installed tooling adjacent to its installed position. Here again, the final positioning will be carried out manually by personnel on a mobile work platform. Once all this is done, the vacuum vessel will be sealed, cleaned and prepared for the first pump down and, ultimately, a first plasma pulse. After this first commissioning of the ITER machine and following the installation of the final diagnostic systems, pellet injection and disruption mitigation system, the stage is set for the installation of the blanket system that provides shielding to the vessel and the superconducting magnets from the heat and neutron fluxes of the fusion reaction. For purposes of maintenance, the blanket wall is modular. It consists of 440 individual segments, each measuring 1 by 1.5 meters and weighing up to 4.6 tons. Each segment has a detachable first wall made of beryllium, which is why the vacuum vessel will now become a beryllium-controlled area for the remainder of the assembly process. Before these heavy components are lifted into position, a photogrammetry survey will be performed. This technology originally developed from the navigation system used on missions to the Moon, will provide the data required to accurately position and align the modules to form a smooth envelope for the delicate plasma. This huge task of customizing thousands of components to very tight tolerances is certainly not the most glamorous task of building a fusion device, but like all preparatory works, they are key to the success of ITER's mission. The installation of the blanket system will be, finally, followed by the diverter. Situated around the bottom of the vacuum vessel, it acts like a giant exhaust system, extracting helium ash and other impurities from the plasma. For maintenance purposes, the diverter is segmented into 54 cassettes, each weighing 10 tons. The heavy weights will have to travel along a complex trajectory from their transfer cask to their final position inside the plasma chamber with pinpoint accuracy. Here it is handed over to a toroidal mover, which will take its precious cargo in a circular path to its final position. The locking of this massive component is performed without any bolting or welding, just by pure tension. The assembly crew, counting 35 people on average per shift, will work in two shifts during daytime. During the night shift, the welding performed during the day will be examined and installed components will be checked for their leak tightness. This operation will last about two years. The assembly of the tokamak is a complex and challenging process that requires the installation of multiple components with sub-millimetric precision. The torus-shaped vacuum vessel of the tokamak consists of nine sector modules, each weighing 1,380 tons and containing two vertical D-shaped coils, thermal shield panels, piping, and other appendices. The assembly of the first module took place on 11 May 12, 2022, and it required over a year of planning and coordination by a team of 50 people from multiple organizations. The lifting and installation of the first sector module was a remarkable feat of technological mastery, testing the limits of the building structure, the overhead crane's lifting capacity, and the complex rigging's maneuverability. The clearance during the operation was minimal, with the load practically grazing different structures on its way to its final destination. The main challenge was determining the module's center of gravity, which required precise measurements, calculations, and 3D models. Despite the challenges, the assembly team overcame this daunting task by compensating with thorough calculations and models, qualification of operations, and exceptional safety measures. The successful installation of the first sector module is a significant milestone in the construction of the tokamak, demonstrating the remarkable engineering and technological advancements required to achieve nuclear fusion a potentially limitless source of clean energy. Living life every day, later die, not okay, all I want and I pray.
All I need are some better days. Fuck me, I'm looking in the mirror. So foggy, but I've never seen clearer. I don't really think anyone can save me. And honestly, I'm not really sure I want saving. I like to be my own worst enemy. There's no risk if you don't try it anything. So I'ma just get by in everything. See you in the next life. Have to be a better me. I don't think that my head's on straight. Gotta flip it and grip it and go and get an x-ray. What's wrong with me? I just feel way. Pushing on my chest and it's squeezed till I suffocate. Better change my mindset, meditate. It's pretty cool that I'm alive and have better days. I could walk, see, here, I should celebrate. Think I could change my mind, maybe elevate. Living life every day, late at night, not okay. All I want, and I pray, all I need are some better days. Yeah, all I need are some better days. Cause all I want, and I pray, I believe in the better yeah. days. I'm kinda stuck between a rock and a hard place. Do I work hard or live at my pace? You're only young once, yeah, that's all great. But I also want a future where I'm okay. Living life is doing lots of cocaine. Wait, no, it's living with no shame. Wait, no, it's sleeping in on Sundays. I guess it's different for each of us and that's okay. Well, I just wanna be happy. How to get there, hmm, glad that you asked me. I think it's different for everyone. Some of us need work, others need fun. Some of us need purpose to overcome. But try to do what you love when it's said and done. Cause there's so many differences in each of us. Trust your gut, it can show you what you want. Living life every day, late at night, not okay. All I want, and I pray, all I need are some better days. Yeah, all I need are some better days. Cause all I want, and I pray, I believe in the better days. Living life every day. Late at night, not okay, all I want, and I pray, all I need are some better days, yeah, all I need are some better days, cause all I want, and I pray, I believe.